Hey everyone, you know who the tone of voice is, and today I want to talk about a certain album that really changed the game in metal, that really inspired so many bands to just take it to the next level when it comes down to metal music in general. Now, when I talk about this, I want to talk about the impact that this specific album from this specific band has made in general. I'm not going to be talking about the band's entire discography, although I will make references to it. I will talk about the band's impact and sound changes per se. I will talk about this very specific album and what sounds it happens to produce. It's by a very, um, very unknown, very underground metal band. So underground, not even the fucking deepest of black metalers know it. And today, we're going to talk about the one and only Metallica's Kill 'em All. Now, Metallica's Kill 'em All is possibly the most recognizable Metallica album that anyone has ever talked about. One of the greatest debuts that has ever entered into the early 80s. And as you can see on the back of here, we got the very young and very, very on edge people of Metallica. James Hetfield, Lars Ulrich, Cliff Burton, and Kirk Hammonds. Look at all of them. So young, so full of energy, so full of the metal that they wanted to produce. Now, Metallica's sound on here was the start of what we happen to know as thrash metal. Now, you got to remember that thrash metal in its first development was a mixture of the new wave of British heavy metal sounds like Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Black Sabbath, and you also got the punk influences like anti Nowhere League, the Sex Pistols, the Ramones, all combined together, and also you cannot deny that there's a whole lot of Motorhead and Venom influence in this. Motorhead and Venom were definitely, definitely the kickers that really inspired Metallica and so many bands like that. Now, Metallica's Kill 'Em All is all about a sort of rebellion against the, what was established as metal in general. You got the hair metalers like Motley Crue, Bon Jovi, uh, Whitesnake, people like that. But the funny thing is, is that Metallica has mentioned a few times that they were inspired by Def Leppard and Van Halen, which were also pretty influential towards the hair metal scene. With that being said though, I think a point I have to make is like, one band can really inspire so many bands to have a different sound. And apparently, a band like, I don't know, Van Halen or Def Leppard inspired also Metallica, just like how those bands really inspired like the hair metal bands that they so happen to hate. But Kill 'Em All, was definitely, definitely a very influential record. And here's the thing, Kill 'Em All wasn't actually like the first band name, uh, band album idea that they happened to come up with. The first one was actually Metal Up Your Ass. And when I discussed this, people were just like, yeah, nah, no. But if you look at like Metallica's earliest performances, especially when they were promoting Kill 'Em All, they mentioned, hey, we want to name it Metal Up Your Ass, but they wouldn't allow us, so hey, Metal Up Your Ass. <laughs> it's so weird that a fucking album like this has really changed the game of metal. You know, you got tracks like Hit the Lights, The Four Horsemen, Motor Breath, Jump in the Fire, Anesthesia, Pulling Teeth, Whiplash, My God, Phantom Lord, No Remorse, Seek and Destroy, Metal Militia. These fucking nine tracks have really, really inspired so many bands. And also, just knowing this, People are going to mention how Dave Mustaine wrote certain songs, and I do agree. Especially with Jump of the Fire. Jump of the Fire is definitely, definitely a fucking Dave Mustaine mega song. And also, just knowing how this was actually produced, and knowing how this was actually just, uh, fucking made. It's so amazing. <laughs> Got the fucking album cover over here. Just gonna put it over here. Look at this. Jump in the Fire, and of course, they do give some credits to Dave Mustaine for Jump in the Fire, Phantom Lord, Dave Mustaine, Metal Militia, Dave Mustaine. God, so many of this is just so amazing. Oh, and the Four Horsemen, too, Dave Mustaine. I wonder if he also wrote any stuff on Master of Puppets, Ride the Lightning, or Hell. Maybe even, um, maybe even a Justice for All. But when I mention this, people happen to, like, put down the significant influence of Kill Em All. But... At the same time, though, I do want to mention that Kill 'Em All was definitely, definitely something that people should just take into account. Because without Kill 'Em All, without Metallica's Kill 'Em All, metal wouldn't be the same as it is today. We wouldn't have all the amazing extreme metal bands, 
We wouldn't have all the metal bands that, that are inspired by this. And hell, this is actually not just the first development of thrash metal, but also a continuation of speed metal in general. And it's inspired so many people to get into the riffs. When I talk about this, kill them all. This is not some album that I can just throw on and just be like, hey, listen to this. I really had to go into detail about how fucking Kill Em All just really, really changed the game from that. I mean, even look at this. The hammer with the blood around it, Kill Em All, Metallica. This really says, hey, we're a game changer and believe. So many people were just astounded that these guys were not a hairband. They just went out of there. Now, I will fully admit that these guys were not the first band to ever take metal to extreme lengths. Uh, there were bands like Motorhead and Venom that really fast-paced it, and especially Venom that really just inspired not just the fast-pacedness of metal, but also the satanic imagery that you happen to see. With that being said, though, I think Metallica also does have some potential hints of first-wave black metal. Like I just said, this was also inspired by Venom, and I would actually see it in, like, Let's see here. Um, maybe Hit the Lights or No Remorse. Yet you definitely feel a whole lot more the Venom influence in No Remorse and Hit the Lights. It really is a really, I got a fucking duck. It really is amazing how this album just really changed everyone's sound. When I mention this, Metallica's Kill Em All just really, really paved the way. And of course, as a band like Metallica, they really have changed their sound. You know, Ride the Lightning was a lot more fast-paced. Master of Puppets was a lot more hard-hitting and a lot more constructed. But also, the one thing you also got to appreciate Metallica is Kill Em All. It's not just the fast-paced, sort of game-changing uh, attire of this, but also you can definitely feel a whole lot more humanity and rawness with Metallica. And believe me, if Metallica's Kill Em All were to come out today in the same production, some people would even assume that this is more akin to Midnight's or maybe, maybe some like black and roll band. Aside from like James Hetfield's more like melodic esque vocals and of course just James Hetfield's more screamy, just like high pitched vocals, you really start to understand how this band really developed their sound. And also, noticing how James Hetfield first discovered his vocals. It was more of a hardcore, sort of punkish sort of sound with a hint of melody that was very inspired by, like, uh, Let Me Kill Mr. Motorhead. When it comes down to this, you also see Cliff Burton's very many solos. Believe me, Cliff Burton definitely, definitely just paved the way and gave so much substance to Metallica. And they got Lars Ulrich, which, honestly, back in the day, he was starting to develop his drumming style, and it did work well for Metallica. And Kirk Hammett, well, Kirk Hammett came around the time when Dave Mustaine was just kicked out. And despite that, Kirk Hammett now didn't really have the energy that Dave Mustaine had. Although, he did do his best when it comes down to replicating sort of like what the solos happened to entail. With that being said, though, having Kirk Hammett just come in from Exodus, and fun fact, he was actually like trained in guitar solos from Joe Satriani around the time when he came to Metallica. When you hear about that, you hear so much fucking praise from Metallica, especially for Master of Puppets. But Kill Em All, Kill Em All definitely needs to be on par with fucking Master of Puppets. Look at this. It's just, it's so amazing that some people even, even go after the one song that people have in fact just Um, Seek and Destroy. Seek and Destroy just going bum 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 and just doing that. Everybody practiced that riff. But honestly, the one riff that really, really just establishes the fucking talent that Metallica has is definitely jump in the fire, just going bum 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 just doing that. You know that there's a whole lot of riff creativity in here. And also, just like I just said before, the rawness in here just really gives more of a sort of like a resistance towards sort of like the clean, well produced, like sleaze metal, hair metal, glam metal sort of sound that was pretty popular in the 80s. When you see this, you're just like, wow, these guys are definitely resisting sort of like, well, the glam metal scene. 
And when I see this, I remember seeing like a documentary about thrash metal, the history of metal, and when it come, came down to like how Metallica just came to the scene. Sebastian Bach of Skid Row actually picked up the album and just said, these are the ugliest bunch of people I've ever seen. I gotta buy this. I mean, hearing Sebastian Bach saying, hey, I gotta buy this, and also seeing how they're definitely not a glam metal band, it really makes me just think, wow, these guys were definitely out of there. And hearing James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich talk about how they were sort of like the outliers and pretty much like the outcast between both the punk and the metal scene, but also gaining sort of like a dedicated fan base of people who just want something new, something more aggressive, something more raw. Nowadays, this is considered most soft by most extreme metal fans, but extreme metal fans should give so much thanks to this album. Because this really has said, hey, metal can go harder, metal can be more extreme, metal can be more raw. It doesn't have to be all timeline, it doesn't have to be all perfect or pretty. It could be raw, it could be disgusting, it could be abrasive. And this is proof that you can make the most amazing metal album ever. For a debut for Metallica, this definitely, definitely was a game changer. And this definitely, definitely propelled metal into a new direction. You gotta give appreciation to this album. You gotta give appreciation to what Metallica did with their debut. Without this, I will say this. There'd be no extreme thrash metal, there'd be no death metal, no black metal, no grindcore, no extreme metal genres in general. Or at the very least, the extreme metal genres that we know. Who knows, maybe another band would actually do that. But when it comes down to just this album, without this, metal would be completely fucking different in a different universe. It's just all about how you recognize and how you give appreciation. And of course, I will address this. Metallica has been getting a whole lot of shit recently. Due to many sound changes, due to many controversies, due to many of the statements that many of the members like James Hetfield, Lars Ulrich, um, some of the bassists that have come through all the time, and of course, Kirk Hammond. These guys don't exactly give enough appreciation. They've been called sellouts for justifiable reasons. They've been called posers for justifiable reasons. Ironic how this is a resistance towards the poser metal of the time. But honestly though, we do have to give appreciation towards what the members were. I mean, could you really go back in time and call these guys posers? Cliff Burton, who actually added a whole lot of more musical integrity toward them. Kirk Hammett, who filled in. James Hetfield, who developed and popularized, well, not developed, I say Joey Ramone, no, no, no. One of the Ramones actually developed the Dom Picking style, but James Hetfield perfected it. James Hetfield just perfected the Dom Picking style for so many fucking people. Without this, like I just said before many times, metal would not be the same. And I would always recommend this album to anyone who wants to get into metal in general. Who wants to really, really give appreciation to what Metallica stood for when it first came out. Alright, like I just said, you know who the tone of voice is. You have a good night.